What's up everyone? Today we're back with more Pico CTF reverse engineering challenges. The title of this challenge is B -b -b bloat and we see that it has the tags reverse engineering, binary, and obfuscation. So that means it's, it's scrambled, it's jumbled. It might be a little bit harder to reverse engineer than if it was not obfuscated. So the description reads, can you get the flag? Reverse engineer this binary. So I'm gonna right click on that link, scroll down to copy, go over to my terminal. I've already made a working directory slash pico slash and then the name of the challenge, bloat. I'm gonna use wget to download it. ls type l, so. Okay, cool, it's there. Use the file command. We see that it's a 64-bit binary and it is stripped. So that means it does not have any debugging symbols. So if I were to throw this into a debugger such as GDB, uh, it's not gonna be very useful, All right? So just to prove a point, first let me make it executable. Now let's open it up in GDB. All right, we see here, reading symbols from the file, no debugging symbols found. So if I try to disassemble main, it doesn't work. It says use the file command. So file, bloat. All right, still, it can't read any debugging symbols because there aren't any. So quit out of that. Let's run it. What's this binary actually doing? What's my favorite number? And then it hangs, it waits for me to enter something. Uh, I'm just gonna enter please sub. I know that's not a number, but you should do it anyway. And then it prints, sorry, that's not it. And it exits. Okay, what if I give it a real number? One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, that's not it. And we see that there's no hint as to how long the number is. Is it a single number? Is it multiple digits? We have no idea. We can use programs like Ltrace to try to look at the library calls. Maybe there's a call to string compare somewhere in here where it compares the number we enter with something else, the true number, let's say 42. Sorry, that's not it. And we see that it exits with a status code of zero. Hmm. Let's run strings on it. Strings will return um, Printable characters, right? Printable strings, function calls. So we see that libc is used, the C standard library that contains functions such as put character that prints a single character to the string, uh, to the screen. Our str dupe, string duplication, it copies a string. Print f, print something to the screen. String length, determine how long the string is. Standard out, you know, print it to our terminal and so on. But I don't see any numbers. I don't see anything that we can kind of cheese to solve the challenge. We see the what's my favorite number message, as well as the sorry, that's not it. And then a bunch of other random garbage that's not really uh, useful. Quit out of here. Okay, so I can't look at it in GDB. I can't look at it, you know, with Ltrace. So as a next step, let's open this up in Ghidra, which is a very powerful reverse engineering framework. Okay, so Ghidra finally loaded. We see it says no active project. So go to file, new project. This is a non-shared project, click next. Okay, it wants us to choose a location. That's the file, or uh, the folder rather. Select it, project name, we'll just call this a uh, bloat project. Finish. Okay, we see it's loaded here, and then we get three icons in our tool chest. The first one is the code browser. The second is a debugger, very similar to GDB that we tried to use earlier, since there are no debugging symbols, because this file this binary is stripped, it won't be very helpful. And then version tracking, which we do not care about. Click on code browser, 
the icon pops up and it'll take a little bit to load. Now that that's done, click file, go down to import file, go to our directory and click on the binary that we want to analyze. Okay, it just wants us to confirm this is what we want to import. That's correct. Hit OK. We get a cool animation of a dragon eating a bowl of zeros and ones. <laughs> it's so random. A pop-up tells us that our binary has not yet been analyzed, so let's do that now. Hit yes. All right, and finally it shows us our import results summary, so it just more metadata about the binary. Select OK. And I'm not a reverse engineer wizard, but my go-to is always to click on this entry function, right? That's the starting point. That takes us to libc underscore start underscore main. And from prior research, I know the first function is actually the main function. So I'm gonna right click and rename it just for my own sanity, main. And now I can double click on it. And then this is the main function, right? This is what uh, is run when we run the binary from the command line, right? It starts from the main function. So go back to my Gijar window. We see several variables are declared on the stack. Okay, we see they're assigned right here. So this first variable, local underscore 10, it's set to some type of offset. And then we see on line 30, that offset is being compared to some value. So if this value changes at any point, it's gonna print stack check fail. So I know this is some type of stack cookie. So I'm just gonna rename it stack cookie. And let's see what these are. So I can put my mouse cursor over the first value and we see in quotes, LU percent R at four and then colon A. Go down to the next one, very similar, 0B9F0FF4. So what are these? These are, if you've seen the last video I made, the most recent one that also had Ghidra, the flags were broken up into pieces and we could just read them as plain text, but these are obfuscated, right? They're all jumbled up, so they're not making any sense. So I could rename these. Um, renaming is totally optional. I just like to do it. it, makes it easier to read the code. So flag piece one and flag piece two and so on. On line 19, we see the printf call that says, what's my favorite number? And then right below it, line 20, they call it a scanf. Now scanf reads in user input and it saves it to a variable, right? So local 48, I'm gonna rename you, just user input. Or actually, let's just call it uh, my num, because we enter a number, right? So if my number equals this value, then it's gonna call this function. Otherwise, it prints sorry, that's not it. So put care 10, so it's just printing the new line. So what is this function? Okay, so the second parameter, which is our flag piece duplicated, right? It's just copied over and called underscore underscore s. And then the string length of that, so let's rename this to string length. And then a for loop happens, call that i. So it iterates over and it does some type of like addition and it will print our flag. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna reverse engineer this any further. It looks pretty annoying to do. So I'm just gonna hit back one more time. So if my number equals this value, it will run that deobfuscation function. So what is this? Right click, we can see the decimal value. 549,255. I'm not gonna remember that. So right click, copy it, go back here. Now it's asking for what's my favorite number. Paste that in, smash the enter button, and it prints out the flag. And you see in the curly braces, it says, um, cut the bloat. <laughs> That's a funny little message inside our flag. So you would just copy this, 
and then you would paste it in to the prompt and then you would solve the challenge cool um, that's how I did it that's my walkthrough let me know if in the comments below if you guys found a different way maybe faster maybe less steps than mine take it easy and see you guys in the next video Thank you.